Black history is American history. And this morning, we take you to Ellis Island, best known, of course, for the millions of immigrants who have passed through there in search of a better life in America. And today, we focus on the hundreds of thousands of black families that have made the journey from the Caribbean to Ellis Island. CBS 2's Maurice Dubois tells the American journey of discovery for a family in Queens. How amazing are these documents? This is when your grandfather got a ticket to come here. And it says he got here in April 26, 1898. When you discovered this, what was that like? Uh, it just touched our heart, you know, because we were searching for a long time to find out. We always knew the stories. Three generations of descendants of Robert Payne Nero, granddaughter Donna Elam, her daughter Jamie Hazel, and great-great-granddaughter Jazzy Rhodes, all now living in Queens. They say little was known about who he was or how he got here. So they made it their mission to find out. And it was really a trip to Ellis Island. We went on a whim and thought, hey, let's um, put uh, Pop's name into the system. And we found him. And we didn't know he came into Ellis Island. We had no idea. That emboldened this trio to dig deeper. They knew he had come here from Antigua, and that was their next stop. I guess I wanted to know more about my history. Let's go back home, let's go see. And we just thought we could look up his information, like how we did at Ellis Island, everything's digital, and we were given books. They were these humongous ledgers, but they were dusty, and you had to go through the mold, you know, from the storms Hurricanes and stuff like that. that. These books had survived fire, Flood, yes, you know, all of it. Uh, uh, in uh, centuries. Hurricane, oh, yes. right, Century. right, which is really, I yeah. mean, it's typical down there. Ultimately, they did not locate his records there, but going through family archives, they found another fascinating document, a letter of recommendation. So he needed a reference to come here. To get off the island, ah, to get off, to get of, off of Antigua. Antigua. Really? Yes. He is honest, steady, and something. Civil. <laughs> civil, civil minded? For unknown reasons, Robert Payne Nero traveled first to England before coming to the U.S. He was 24, settled in Brooklyn, married, and had 16 children, 10 of whom survived to adulthood. The extended family went on to varied and impressive careers. Five have doctorates, including Elam and Hazel. Another had a successful photo studio in Harlem. Son served in the military, and there was even a street in Crown Heights named for a descendant, recognizing his contribution to the community to name just a few. Wow. This is literally if these walls could talk, that kind of moment. They would have millions of stories to tell. Over 12 million immigrants processed here on Ellis Island. Based on the most recent census data, nearly 750,000 New Yorkers reported Caribbean ancestry. About 60% of New Yorkers are immigrants or children of immigrants. But as Ellis Island history director Stephen Lean tells us, there's more to the story. What was it like when they arrived? How were they treated? Was it the same? Was it different? The people who were physically setting foot on Ellis Island were steerage class. So these were people who didn't have a lot of money. And when you're talking about during Ellis Island's heyday, you know, 5,000 people a day being processed here, and you talk about the six second physical that they would have to all uniformly endure, there wasn't a lot of time to treat people differently based on where they were coming from. And it wasn't fun. No, it wasn't. A lot of times we hear people come into the center saying, I asked about this when my great grandfather was still alive and he told me to mind my business, said he didn't want to talk about it. In 1921 and 24, there were immigration quotas enacted. Lean says it was designed to keep this country looking a certain way. Was it kind of an America first concept like? Definitely. And then after 1924, we see a large like restricting of people who are able to come into the country. And so as a result, that's why we end up seeing like the sharp decline um, of Caribbean immigrants until about 1940. When there's a need for immigrants to come to serve in war efforts, um, working in agricultural um, military industry and things like that. Dr. Taisha Maddox is an assistant professor of African and African American studies who says about 355,000 Caribbean immigrants came through Ellis Island and other eastern ports. And when they did get here, she adds, there were other serious issues. They come here into a system of structural racism that they're not used to, um, being relegated um, to the lowest job opportunities, not being able to work um, in their 
professional careers. But some Caribbean immigrants were able to overcome these hurdles, making a mark in the artistic and intellectual worlds as part of the Harlem Renaissance and beyond. People like Arturo Schomburg, writer Claude McKay, and the activist Marcus Garvey. Especially in this early period of Caribbean immigration before 1924, um, a lot of the people coming were middle class, highly educated, um, and usually had some kind of professional trade or training. Yet they um, came here anyway. They came here looking for better uh, job opportunities for themselves. That was the case with Robert Payne Nero, who had been a chef in Antigua. He was coming with this hope and, and dream and everything and probably felt that when he landed. But then I said, what did he realize when he did get here? Because he, he, you know, he ended up being a porter because black men it, you know, for employment. Remember that letter, he came all the way here with that letter. So for better life and employment and to expand his horizons. But you think about this educated, driven, conscientious man of great character coming mm -hmm. here to deal with all this, all this racism basically. Y yes. And you're relegated to these menial jobs, right? That's unsettling right. to know that, you know, this journey, you finally get there. But this family knows that Nero's journey and sacrifice gave them the life they know today. And they say their connection to their ancestral home of Antigua is powerful and fulfilling. You know, you feel like, uh, wow, I know, you know, where some of my ancestors are from. You know, and maybe I walked in the same beach that they did or you I'm eating to. the same mm -hmm. food. It's and, the right parish. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's something about walking into a place and everyone looks like you and everyone's welcoming you. It's just completely different. It's like I have another home. <laughs> if you had a chance to ask him some questions, I mean, yes. what would they be? Was your heart filled when you came here? Was it what you imagined it to be?